I'm a big fan of the concept of curiosity. I wake up in the morning and ask myself, what can I do today that will awaken in me a ravenous sense of wonder, of wonderment? Now, what is wonderment? Wonderment is when the world bewitches you, when the world entrances you, when the world arrests your attention. Charles Darwin actually talked about this back in the day, about the, the power of attention, how attention, how our capacity to focus, to become enchanted by something is a necessary precursor for any kind of interpersonal experience that is transformative, and that is educational, right? We need to be focused. We need to be paying attention. Looking begins with love. Love begins with looking, right? And that is a prerequisite for transformation. And so wonder requires attention. Now, attention, if we're lucky enough to get it, attention when sudden and when close, as Darwin used to say, will then graduate into sort of a sense of surprise. You know, attention is sudden and close, graduates into surprise. And this then graduates into the next stage, astonishment. <gasps> Take a breath, right? You're inspired. <gasps> you know, the moments to take your breath away. And then, and then astonishment will graduate to the next level, which is just stupefied amazement, right? <laughs> Cognitive ecstasy, that sense of first sight unencumbered by knowingness. When you have no mental models, no references for what you're seeing, and it's just coming in, and you are in the living, breathing act of accommodating yourself to what's happening. You're letting it all in without your film screen of defense mechanisms and filters and prejudices and all these things that get in the way of experiencing that thing freshly and intensely. You know, I've talked about the power of awe to be so decentering. It's been described as an experience of opiated adjacency. You're sort of blissed out of your own way and in turn something significant can actually happen. You can finally be shaken to tears. You can finally be moved to the point of tears and we love this, right? Cascading waves of cognitive ecstasy, a sort of neurological neurostorm of intense intellectual pleasure. Carl Sagan was right. He's that understanding is a kind of ecstasy, right? There is an ecstasy of understanding. There is a sense of revelation, a sense that the cloud parts, the curtain parts, and what had never been seen as being devoured by the eyes, even a blade of grass, right? Even a blade of grass, we've been told by the romantic poets, when seen through a microscope, when given complete attention, becomes a magnificent universe in itself, radiant and alive and exploding with wonderment. <laughs> and so if only we could do that. If only we could hijack our perceptual apparatus and see the world as if through a microscope, as if through a telescope, as if through time-lapse photography, right? We can hack space, perception, time, and mind. We can literally instrument ourselves into blissful states of rapturous awe that in turn, my friends, and this is where it serves as existential medicine, in turn, these experiences, right, of, of contemplating space and time on a scale just shy of the infinite leave us with real lasting cognitive benefits. We get increased creativity, increased well-being, increased compassion. We are more than what we, than what we were. These experiences add up to being more than the sum of their parts. There is transcendence. There is something new being born in astonishment. And so what we have to do is be willing to go there. Be willing to to go there. Be willing to go there.